A very good afternoon to you all. Uh, my name is Jonathan Wiles. I run the History of Chilwall website and also the History of Chilwall Facebook group, which I'm sure you're all on and you're looking at this at the moment. What I'm looking to do is to do a series of monologues of around 20 minutes each. And these will be of various topics, um, such as Chilwell C of E. I'll be talking about St Catherine's College, Chilwell Woods. I'm going to be looking into a little bit of my family history. Jackson's Farm, Jackson's Pond, Chilwell Abbey. See what I can do about Chilwell Abbey. I'll be talking about the bells and the church, the Chilwell um, church wrote under projects that never happens and also some little bits of interesting history which are found along the way and I hope you found it enjoyable what I'm going to do is provide you with some images some Google Earth images uh, have a look at some old maps and just give you a brief overview of what I've learned so far in the last 40 years of living around Chilwall so I'm going to start off today we're doing a little bit of how we came to Chilwall and where we ended up at the present time with regard to the family. Now I've also already done a family tree and I've also, well, I'm partly through writing a family history book at the moment. And it's really enjoyable because I've basically traced my bloodline back to 1820s on one side. I've also got some really good information on my nan's side and my nan had seven or eight brothers my granddad had seven or eight brothers so there's a lot of history i'm looking to go into further i suppose let's start off with me so my name is john wilde um born and bred in Childwall in the 1970s so um my brother david mum and dad um one of the good things about Childwall is the fact that i when i was brought up here I didn't really know that much about the area. It's only sort of recently, maybe in the last 20 or so years, I've done some research on the area. And that really stems from years ago. So I was doing, um, I was in charge of the church tower at All Saints Childwall. And someone said to me, We you know, it'd be great if you could just do a small website on the history of the bells and the history of what bell ringing is about. And I thought, yeah, that's great. That sounds really good. I was looking to recruit more people. And it was just a very one page website just to give a brief introduction on the actual website itself. Then I decided to delve into the church history. And then it grew from there because you had to do Chilwell Hall, Chilwell Woods, the Abbey, um, all different farms around the area. So it's really grown into a really large sort of website and I'm really proud of what I've done so far. Many of you will have also purchased a book, uh, The History of Chilwell, which was published last year. Um, and that was again, that was a really good insight into what I could do for the history of the area. So going back to my family history, first of all, I suppose I can actually trace where we came to Chilwell. Um, this was 1936. So my mum's mum and dad, were married in Toxteth Park and my grandfather was from Lower Tranmere and my nan was from Toxteth Park originally. It was never called Toxteth, she always called it Toxteth Park, make it sound posh. But in those days it was, Toxteth Park was, if you know the history of Toxteth Park, it was one of the, the gentry at one point. Now they married early on in 1936 now when they moved across they moved across from Toxteth Park into Chilwall now correct me if I'm wrong Jeff Bird because I'm sure I've got the date right they moved into Dominic Close and Dominic Close was 1936 give or take now on the screen at the moment I've got an old map showing effectively Chilwell back as it was in the 1900s and on the right hand side Chilwell now just to give you a brief sort of insight on what we're going to look at so Dominic Close originally so if I zoom into to Dominic Close Dominic Close is here on the right hand side and my nan's house was number 10 now 
on the left hand side of the map obviously there's, there's nothing at all there's no chill valley roads you will have score lane as the nearest main road if you like and this is the green hill as you can see from one side and then you've got the railway track now in 1936 when the houses were built in Dominic Close my nan and granddad moved in I think the idea originally was to have a position where they would actually purchase the house at some point so they'd have a mortgage and they'd look to purchase the house and move forward but initially they rented the house for the time being now nobody could envision the war years um, the war years started soon after and my granddad was sent away to serve in the war for all the time the war lasted obviously fought in Dunkirk got his medal and came back he was quite badly injured at one point and spent some time in hospital before he came back to Dominic Close but I think um, from what I've gathered they really didn't have the money back then to actually purchase the property and I think it was a a long-term deal with the, the local corporation just to rent and it's quite funny because uh, I've got fond memories of Dominic Close and I'll talk to you a little bit about Dominic Close and the neighbourhood and the area. So when you look at Dominic Close, um, when my nan was around, so they were, it was a close-knit community. There were neighbours who I can remember. So when you look into um, a, sort of a closer view of the map, you have number 10, which is here. And across the road, there was Flo Watson. Now, Flo Watson's garden used to back onto the embankments at the back. And it was the local meet meeting point for all the local kids, including my mum, her sister, and her two brothers, Raymond, Mickey, and Brenda. And you could still see the steam trains going across Chill Valley Road, the bridge, at the back of Flo Watson's house. It really was a, a fantastic place to be back in those days. And I always regret not being able to say I was born far too late. I think they lifted the tracks in 1979 from the loop line. So I completely missed out on seeing anything at all. Next to um, Flo Watson's was Mrs. Hull. Not too much information on Mrs. Hull, but she was a lovely neighbour. Uh, at number race, there was Frank and Nellie. And again, they were really nice neighbours. At number six is a chap whose name I have forgotten for the time being and I really should remember and I'll hopefully remember Mr Barnes there we go so um, Mr Barnes I believe is still there he's been there since since day one he really has been there for a long long time whenever you go down Dominic Close I cut through occasionally to go through the alleyway when I'm visiting my mum locally and uh, Mr Barnes's house and garden is always immaculate it really is. Dominic Close had two alleyways at one point there was one alleyway to go to Chill Valley Road and there was one alleyway to go along to the back which was Lanfran Close. Have a photograph and let me just go back to my um, settings so I've got a photograph somewhere here and that was 10 Dominic Close. You can tell by the age of the car, so probably 60s, 70s maybe, I'd say mid 70s. And I can remember going into the house so many times. Um, at the present time, there's no front garden, it just is a path. But originally when you walked in, what surprised me the most about Dominic Close was the fact that there was no central heating it really was a cold house you'd walk in the main door you'd have the main front to back lounge then you'd have on the on the right hand side originally there was a cupboard that was built in they knocked the cupboard down to have straight access into the dining room and also the kitchen now the kitchen really was tiny it was a really small kitchen um, and nan produced so much brilliant things from the kitchen but the house was always cold Upstairs there was the three rooms and it, to, to this day I, I can't believe that there was four children brought up in the house because the box room really was what you'd call a box room. Um, but they did, they survived and they went through it and they, they obviously made the best of the house. My nan was still there in 1999. Again it was still original, original windows, 
Um, obviously a new front door, new back door to move with the times. They had an area shelter in the back garden and when the area shelter was moved, my grandfather bought a shed. The shed was bought, I think, and there's a reason why I'm telling you this, 1953. Um, once my nan moved away from the property, it came to my mum's house and I've now been gifted the shed to to Wawa Garden. So it, it's lasted a long, <laughs> a long, long time and it really has been a, a fantastic you know, achievement to have that shed for so long. Now, with regards to my nan, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of what my nan did in the area. So when work was sort of scarce during the war, she became what's known as a char lady. Now, a char lady is a posh word for a cleaner. And she was, she had three jobs at one point in various places, but she was the char lady for Dr. Hillman's surgery. Now, Dr. Hillman's, if you go back a little bit, Dr. Hillman's surgery was on the corner of Chibble Valley Road and Bentham Drive. And she worked there for a number of years as the cleaner. I was allowed to go in the front entrance. They were considered to be friends as well. Dr. Hillman, Dr. Sam and Dr. June were absolutely great friends with us, great friends with the family. They treated my nan so well. Um, they treated her not just as sort of a, a person they employed, but a personal friend. There were times where they were, they were entertaining and she would be asked to come up and prepare a small meal. And she did it because she wanted to, because she, you know, she was so happy about Dr. Hillman's. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of information on what I'm talking about Dr. Hillman's surgery. I have done a little bit of information on here. So, the Valley Medical Centre began its life at the beginning of the 20th century in the front room of a Victorian terraced house in Fountains Road, Kirkdale, Liverpool 4, and it also served as the doctor's home. The first known doctor to the actual practice was Dr. Graham Smith, and he can conducted his surgery from there, charging his fees by the consultation and very likely providing medicines himself. Now, Dr. Smith eventually acquired a shop at 139 Westminster Road and the surgery remains until 1992. Two young doctors came along, a husband and wife team took over the practice, which was Dr. Sam and June Hillman, originally from Glasgow. They carried on conducting their practice from the shop on Westminster Road and eventually purchased a new built house on the corner of Chibble Valley Road and Bentham Drive, which at the time was a rural area. They built a small extension on the side of the house and began to build another practice from scratch. This was the beginning of the practice that we know of today. Dr. Sam and June, as they are effectively known, they ran the Kirkdale and Chilwell surgery between them driving up and down Queen's Drive between the two sites. Dr. Sam and June Hillman were doctors to Liverpool Hope University and the practice continues to provide this service to the present day. Dr. Sam Hillman was the occupational health doctor for Jacob's Biscuits and also did weekly sessions at the A&E departments at Walton Hospital. Now I've got fond memories of the actual area and I've got fond memories of the, um, the house itself of Dr. June and Sam's house and I can remember going in a lot of the times during the actual side entrance. It's now a private house. I've not been in since they passed away or that well at least Dr. Sam passed away. Dr. June Hillman is still alive at the age of 94 and living in Scotland. So we write off to her occasionally and, and she sends us letters and she's also received a copy of the, the book as well, the History of Chill book. And again, it was a lovely house. It was a front, front to back house um, with the lounge on the actual side. You had the, the doctor's surgery at the side. Um, and I can just remember going into the doctor's surgery many a time to you know various ailments or what have you. But I think the best part about it was when I was four months old. So here now, just looking at Google Maps, uh, this was the original surgery part and they built an extension on the side house and the surgery entrance was here. There was one room surgery and depending it was potluck and depending on who you got. Sometimes you get Dr. June, sometimes you get Dr. Sam and Dr. Sam, he, he took no prisoners. He really was a, 
a gentleman but if you were well enough to go into the surgery then he would turn around normally and say that you were well enough to go into work uh, that was just Dr Sam for you really nice chap now moving on from uh, Dominic Close I've then got further information on my other grandparents my dad's mum and dad so my dad's mum and dad and I'll continue to talk about my nan in a bit more detail but my dad's mum and dad they were married in St David's Church in 1943 I don't have a photograph of the wedding day um, I do have a nice photograph let me just go back and have a look um, this one so well, let me do an early one first of all let me see if I've got an early one for you so we have that was the photograph of my nan and my grandpa I believe that was taken in Basel Close now they were married in St David's Church in Childwall in 1943 and when I spoke to my nan a few years ago I'll talk about my nan further later on when I spoke to my nan she said to me that a bomb was in front of St St David's Church in 1943 and that her friend who was getting married at the time turned around and said we don't know if we're going to get married because there's a bomb in front of St David's Church fortunately the bomb didn't go off and it was cleared and the area was deemed safe and they were married in I think it was July of 1943 and they had my dad in November 1943 so it was quite uh, quite rushed with regards to my nine granddad's one of the best things about them was the fact that my granddad um, again came from a family of tool makers so his dad uh, James Wilde was a tool maker Albert Wilde my grandfather was a tool maker he was also working in Meccano as foreman and started there in 1953 again my late dad worked for Meccano till the whole place closed down in the late 1970s and I think it was just a fantastic you know, operation for Meccano, which I, again I will talk about on a second, a second, a separate subject. But Albert and Olive, they moved from uh, Smithdown Road, and they moved into Basil Close for a short time. Um, and once they left Basil Close, they moved, and here you've got Basil Close here on the map on the right hand side. They then moved across the road, well, almost across the road, into Barnum Drive. Now, Barnum Drive, um, I believe they moved in in 1956. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was when um, Barnum Drive actually was built. One of the funny things about it was the fact that um, when, my la when my nan lived in Dominic Close, so when we go back to the actual map itself, um, they, my other nan and granddad who lived on Barnum Drive, lived just behind School Lane Gardens, um, and they also wanted a little bit of privacy. And it was quite funny because um, my nan, originally at the time, when my nan moved into Dominic Close, I asked her what was it like, and what was it like during the war years, and my nan turned around and said, "Well, Chill Valley Road wasn't built up at the time." it was literally a, a, a small thoroughfare at the time and you didn't have all the houses on Bonside Court or Givenchy Close or Barnum Drive the only houses she could see from the back windows was Score Lane and she could say that she could regularly see from the back bedroom window of Dominic Close right up to um, All Saints Chilwell and she could actually see people walking along Score Lane and into the church and I think that would be a fantastic view to see these days without any sort of interruption of houses it was all pure fields at that point so with regards to my other nan and granddad they moved to Barnum Drive and then when it was retirement for Barnum Drive they moved well my nan moved across to they both lived in Ribble Way which was off Gattaca Park Drive and then my grandfather carried on working for Meccano but my nan moved across to North Wales the idea was that they were going to rent a house or a flat in North Wales he was going to work at Meccano till his retirement and they planned to spend a couple of years apart 
because he was still working in a good in a good employed job she was now looking after the flats but when the redundancy took place in Meccano they both moved across to uh, North Wales but for the time being when my nan was in North Wales and my granddad was still in Ribble Way they wrote a series of letters to each other which I've got um, from Nan's estate and there's a lot of information on the family which I've got from the family itself. What I'd like to do is to briefly talk again on this video about Woolacombe Road. Now Woolacombe Road was where I was born and bred. I'm not going to give you the actual road, uh, the actual house number, although you will see it on videos anyway. But just for the purpose of the actual video itself, I'm not going to give the actual house number. But Woolacombe Road, we moved into Woolacombe Road, and again, David can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we moved into Woolacombe Road in 1975. Now, Woolacombe Road was at the time, when you go back to, I've got an old photograph here. So let me go back to a photograph. So this is the 1930s, and if it's this one looking at, so this is 1932. So what does this show? Well, this shows Chilwall C of E being built. If you want to try and get your bearings, at the bottom is Walton Road, and this would be the partition for St Catherine's College. This would be Porlock Avenue and again there's nothing at all for Woolacombe or Babacombe Road at the time. Now I've got a few photographs of Woolacombe Road uh, which I will touch on in a moment but I think one of my uh, fondest memories growing up on Woolacombe Road and I'm not going to talk about the house especially was the fact that it backed on to St Catherine's College. Now St Catherine's College, I'm going to give you some photographs first of all. So here's a photograph of Woolacombe Road and it shows, to get your bearings, you've got Chilwell Park Avenue coming down here, which wasn't completed. You've got Chilwell C of E here. You've got Countersbury Drive, which again wasn't completed. And you've got Woolacombe Road and you've got the back part of St Catherine's College. Now for me, St Catherine's College was an extension to the back garden of Woolacombe Road. So Woolacombe Road, this was our house, and obviously you can see the the, uh, the house number now. But we moved, my mum and dad moved in, I think in 1975. And my mum and dad set to work on the house. And between them, they built the extension on the porch. They built an extension on the garage. They also built a kitchen at the back and changed a lot of the actual layouts around. And to me, it was just a fantastic place. Woolacombe Road, I've got fond memories of. Uh, we have a few photographs of the back garden. And the reason why I'm gonna tell you what the back garden was, was, was for, was it backed onto St. Catherine's College. So a view of, from our back bedroom window, which was St. Catherine's College at the time. Now. Originally, all of the car park was tennis courts and you had the stone wall which ran all the way down to the bottom of Woolacombe Road and to the other side went across to Stan Park Road. We could just literally hop over the fence into what was called the jungle at the time, it was overgrown and there was lots of um, iron fences around here at one point but that was the back view of St Catherine's College. That building's gone, that building's gone it's all been transformed. The last time I was there was for my first COVID jab, and I was sort of, you know, quite sort of amazed how it had changed. Again, we've got a picture of what's what, what, what was basically my den. So the two conifer trees you used to scale up the conifer trees and look out onto St Catherine's College. Now, St Catherine's College. I've done some information on St Catherine's College as well. Uh, which I will talk ab about a bit later on. But effectively, what I want to talk to you about is Stuart McCann. Now, Stuart McCann used to live in Woolacombe Road and used to live in my house before we moved in. And I, he's sadly passed away now, but I got in contact with Stuart a few years ago. And Stuart responded to my email. I said to him, can you provide some information on Woolacombe Road? 
and he said he can. And this is part of his email, which I'll actually uh, I'll read out to you now so you can see. Thanks for your email. It follows my story in many ways. I was born in 1933 in Mossley Hill, but we moved to number 14, probably in 1934-35, uh, when it was built. It cost £750, and it took my parents several years to save the deposit of £50. Dad was a rep for the Indian Rubber and Gossip Perch and Telegraph Works, part of a big group, including Palmer Tyres. They made industrial conveyor belting and other items. He had a reserved occupation and was allowed a petrol allowance so he could visit the various quarries and factories in North Wales and Lancashire. Now, what was strange about this was when Stuart was talking about the family, his dad passed away quite suddenly uh, at the age of 57. And it almost mirrors my family because my dad passed away when he was 39 and I was only six. And I have, again, I might talk about this in a later, in a later monologue, I have limited um, memories of my dad, but the, the memories I do have are really good. So when we lived there and up until the 12th of April 1960, when my dad suddenly died at age 57, we moved to Parkgate. The only alterations to the house was the construction of an area shelter at the back end of the garage. Now, when you went into the garage um, at Woolacombe Road, it really was the back end of the garage. We didn't know it was an area shelter at the time, but you could generally tell that's what it was built for. It was so well built. A low door was made into the hall, but we never used it as a shelter. Now, funnily enough, when we had the house ourselves, the low door was bricked up and it became the tin cupboard. At the time, he had a Nostin 10, and the shelter was made so that he could get the car into the garage. Now let me go back to my pictures and somewhere I should have a photograph of that very car. If you just give me a moment, if I put it on here. If I haven't, ah, there we go. So that is outside Woolacombe Road and that was the car. Going back to the, so the a very substantial shelter was built in the garage of number 10, owned by Mr. Miles. It had two levels of bunks with lots of sandbags in the front. A card with red on one side and green on the other was hung up to indicate if there was a raid still in progress. I would have been age seven when the May Blitz took place. I slept in the shelter and after a noisy night, I pretended to be asleep in the morning and mum left me there, no school that day. I remember the drone of the bombers and also looking out of the kitchen over tennis courts where there were small fires from incendiary bombs. Luckily, only one house on the road has a small fire in the roof. Now, credit here to Phil Eccles. I have a photograph of Woolacoon Road on the house that was bombed, or partly bombed. You can see the roof had gone on one side and caught fire. I think I've got an interior photograph showing the interior. So it was a very, very close call for the family indeed. Um, I'm going to talk about um, bombing in World War II and Chilwell at a later date. Um, so half of the garden on the right hand side was dug over for Dig for Victory. But the only thing was grown successfully for fruit trees. Now in the back of our garden we had a plum tree, we had two apple trees and we had a pear tree. We still had those when we were there. I used to play in the garden with my dinky toys and clockwork train set and my dog which I was given in 1942. There was very little traffic then and the dog was let out before breakfast and he disappeared over the back wall for a few hours. We think he visited the kitchens of the college which was then the Northern Hospital and St Paul's Eye Hospital. We never, brought, we never bought dog food. We used to go over the wall until someone told us that one small building was the mortuary, so we never, never went near it again. The college had a bell tower which struck every quarter of an hour during the day and during the night. Now again I've put on my group, um, this is a photograph of the inside of the bell tower at St Catherine's College. Now you didn't need a watch in those days because it chimed all the time. It chimed on the quarters, it chimed on the hour, and as you can see, that was the hour bell. I think it chimed up until about 12 o'clock midnight for memories, and it was chimed by a barrel roll. 
So this is underneath the actual clock chamber and depending on how the barrel there will change, will, will move, it will alter the different strings which will pull the hammers on the different bells and that's how you get your different what's called Westminster chimes. Again it was just a place where you know, for Woolacoon Road for me was just I remember that clock chiming all the time. All building stopped in 1939 and there were fields where the bottom of Chawl Park Avenue is now. They were very they were very handy for bonfires. The bottom of Woolacoon was also left with a rough surface for the last 100 yards. There was a large emergency water tank built on the side of the road by Wilson Road. When we went to school we pretended to be speedway riders on the gravel. So there's lots of information on the actual area and lots of information on the house itself. Um, again the house as much as you described it with a lounge at the rear and a dining room in the front. This was converted into my bedroom during the Blitz. There was a kitchen with a cold fired range with a narrow back kitchen leading to the side of the house. There was also a coal house behind the back kitchen and toilets at the back with access from the garden. Two ladies called asking if we could put them up while they visited a patient in the hospital. It turned out that it was an admiral who had been wounded. Some time later the admiral's son, who was also in the Royal, Na Royal Navy, visited us to thank us. I was in bed with chicken pox but never forgot the braid on his hat. When we lived there the building on Walton Road was Northridge. That was Chewell CV and we'll talk about that later on and became a Ministry of Pensions Hospital. All the patients wore bright blue uniforms, many had limbs missing. Survivors of a frigate which escaped the Yangtze River in China were also there. Looking at the houses on Google Earth shows how things have changed. Hardly any houses had a front garden. Number 16 does, however it seems to be original with leaded light windows and a wooden fence. Mr and Mrs Shaw lived there when we were there and I remember Mr Shaw returning from the Navy and all the neighbours pushing his car to try and start it. The Bretherton's were also there, they had a daughter called Julia. Mrs Miles lived at number 10 and Mr and Mrs Gillies at number 12. He had a HRG sports car which was worth around £60,000 today. Next door uh, opposite was the Go Lightly's and next door being Mr Cohen who had the pharmacy at the shops. His son Michael had polio um, and it said he became a noted surgeon. I can remember many names of the people living in the roads. We used to play in the road all the time, namely uh, mainly near number 40 where the lampposts were suitable for rounders. We also played hockey with old skates and walking sticks and all the woods were open which were also our playgrounds. Now again when you look at a, an overview of St Catherine's College a little bit of brief information. So Woolacombe Road, I think this was 1931 or 32. So you had effectively, if I can get my bearings now, the back of Woolacombe Road, which would be here on the right hand side, and you'd have the original tennis courts, you'd have the block of the main block, and you'd have what is Stan Park Road and Highville and South Highville. Again, so much has changed. So we used to nip over the back fence and we used to go along and have a look. And again, all this has changed. This is now obviously the car park. There's now a new build on here, the sports center. But we also came down to this part here and this part had trees. And it was just a fantastic place to hide, it really was. When you look at sort of Google Maps now and you look at sort of what was there originally, um, when you look at sort of Stamp Park Road, everything now on Stamp Park Road, if I go along to Stamp Park Road, everything's changed. So everything's changed in the area. Again, you have, um, if I just zoom into here, and this should be Stamp Park Road. Now, originally back in my day, uh, this was this is now Stamp Park Road, coming down from Highville. There was an entrance here, which is now blocked up. And further over on this side, on Stamp Park Road, there was also another entrance. That This was the main entrance to get into St Catherine's College. At the bottom of Stamp Park Road, just on the corner of Tagus Avenue, that was our conifer tree. And we used to go to the tree for local conifers, remember it well. So what I'm going to do, just a very brief um, 
picturesque sort of information on the family. So you've seen my nan and granddad there with Ken Dodd opening a new show home in 2000. There is my mum and dad at my mum and dad's wedding married in St Peter's in Walton in 1969. Um, there's my mum's mum and dad and my dad's mum and dad. Um, again photo of my mum and dad outside St Peter's Walton. Uh, we have my nan. I'm going to do a separate video on my nan. She lived until she was 102 and there's lots of memories on my nan. Again, a couple of photographs of Woolacombe Road. So that was the view out of my bedroom window back in Woolacombe Road, back at the time. Probably 1989, 1990. And again, the original windows that was probably taken around the same era. And just look at the lack of cars in, in Woolacombe Road and Babacombe Road. That's how I remember it. Again, I'm going to touch on in another sort of series of monologues different people around sort of Woolacoon Road, maybe some neighbours talking about various things, um, talking about more of the family. Again, this was my my mum was here, 1961, with my grandparents. So for those who know my mum, Linda, she'll you'll try and recognise her. I'm going to talk about the bells in a, in a future monologue as well. Um, this was my dad in Woodston Road. Uh, that was Dave Fellow's my dad's best man's car at the time. And I think I've got a photograph somewhere of Dave. Have I got it on here? Mm, yes. So again, I'm going to talk about the, the bells and bell ringers. But this was Dave Fellows and Mike Dodd. And I'll talk about that in a later, in a later monologue. But I think that sums up the information on my particular family. It sums up a brief information on Woolacombe Road. It takes a brief information on St. Catherine's College. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, this will be going up on YouTube. When you click on the link on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. There will be more monologues at some points. I'm going to be doing one next on Chewell Church and the Bells. And I hope you can join in for that. Many thanks.